Welcome to a special edition of Off Your Rocker, a Senior View podcast. I'm your host, Billy Daniel, with my co-host, Melissa Smith. How we, are you? Great. We are both from Senior View, and we feel so blessed to be able to be here today and have a, this opportunity with Dr. Dana Hawkinson. Thank you so much yeah. for being with us. Yeah. Dr. Hawkinson is the Medical Director of Infection Prevention and Control here at the, the University of Kansas Health System. Thanks so much for being with us. We are in the senior living industry, okay. the most susceptible mm -hmm. group mm -hmm. of individuals individuals that uh, around this coronavirus yeah. situation that's going on right now. So we wanted to get in front of you to ask mm -hmm. you some of the questions that our client communities are wanting to know. Uh, I mean, we all know that the seniors are susceptible. How is this different than just say the regular old flu? Yeah. So that is correct. Um, with this novel coronavirus or SARS-CoV-2, um, as with many different respiratory infections, whether it's influenza or other common cold viruses such as rhinovirus, metanumavirus, and the other common coronaviruses, which are distinctly different from this. Huh. A lot of times, older patients and patients with underlying comorbidities such as heart failure, lung disease, cancers, anything like that, are certainly more susceptible to the disease and progression to severe disease and even death. So hmm. is it, but is, are they more susceptible to this particular virus than they are to say what we deal with every year in the fall and winter flu? You know, it's hard to say if they're more susceptible. They are certainly more susceptible than younger patients oh, gotcha. or patients mm -hmm. under 50. Um, patients over 50 and even over 70 seem to develop symptoms sooner and progress to severe disease sooner than patients, say, under 70 years old. Interesting. What, what are some things that like senior living communities can do to prevent the spread or coming into the community or whatnot? What are some things that you recommend? Certainly we know that uh, senior living facilities and, and nursing facilities are always more susceptible to have spread throughout the facility mm -hmm. in those patients, but also those caregivers. The mainstays of prevention for this infection continue to be simple everyday measures. That includes very good hand hygiene, right. washing with soap and water, frequently, avoiding touching other high touch surfaces and also avoid touching your hands in your, into your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Um, trying to avoid sick contacts from coming in is mm -hmm. another thing, especially in these facilities. Mm -hmm. um, those tend to be the most uh, reliable means of preventing further infection. Some common sense really mm -hmm. yeah. around yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. So then let's say someone in a community comes down with coronavirus. Yeah. They're pulled out, which I, I, I don't know if that would be protocol. I think every senior living community would have different protocol around right, that. Right. But let's say they're sick enough that they're going to the hospital mm -hmm. and then they begin to get better and all of that. When do they come back? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good question. I think there are very many details into say when they can come back. Um, it, it's difficult to answer at this point. Um, a lot of the things that we say about the infection right now, uh, a lot of the knowledge we say at this point in time or the current state. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, it is different than influenza. Typically with influenza, people would say, well, after a couple days or after 24 hours of fever free, you can maybe go right. back. Right. At this point in time, in anybody that's infected with the virus or may have symptoms of the virus, uh, obviously we've all seen that um, the website CDC the guidance is probably stay out for 14 days or self-quarantine for 14 days. Mm -hmm. And so I think these continue to be evolving um, aspects of what do we do now that we've had patients with this? When can they come back to these facilities? I don't think we know the answer to that. I think we need um, further investigation and guidance as far as what to do in those types of circumstances. And the severity of how it's spreading is really because it's just very easy for, for it to be Mm -hmm. spread to person to person. Can you talk about how it is kind yeah. of spreading a little bit to each, not to each person, but how that's happening? So in general, like mm -hmm. other common respiratory viruses, this seems to be spread on uh, droplets. Mm -hmm. So within six to ten feet, if somebody's cough, coughing or sneezing, they can certainly spread the virus to you. The other way is that if they're coughing or sneezing, those droplets can land on surfaces, high touch surfaces such as tables, such as railings, doorknobs, uh, church pews grocery store carts. So they can end up anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, we still don't understand or know how long they can live on surfaces from a few hours to a few days to a week. Um, but 
thereby people are able to touch those surfaces and that's when they're touching their face mm -hmm. and that's how it's spreading for the most part. And so by employing adequate hand hygiene and frequent hand hygiene, you're hopefully able to decrease the spread um, should there be um, the virus on those high touch mm -hmm. surfaces. How does that compare, sorry, how, how does that compare to the flu mm -hmm. with, with yeah. it living on surfaces Same and stuff like that? Is it, is it comparable? It's or? similar to the okay. flu, okay. but we okay. want to make the distinction mm -hmm. this disease process is different than the flu okay. for yeah. many mm -hmm. aspects. Okay. Yeah. Um, but as far as the spread, we, we're pretty sure and pretty confident that it's probably droplet spread as well as fomites, which are inanimate objects such mm. as door handles, mm -hmm. um, doorknobs, railings, things of that nature, high touch surfaces. Mm -hmm. So let's say I get coronavirus, mm -hmm. I recover from coronavirus, mm -hmm. can I get coronavirus again? We still don't know that for sure. We would hope that you would have some immunity, um, but it's still not known for sure um, what, what, what is the immunity and can you develop it a second time weeks down the road, months down the road. Mm -hmm. And where what? does it go in the summer? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you know, it, it's going to die down and then... I, I don't know that it'll die down. Okay. So mm -hmm. we want to make the distinction uh, that this is different than influenza. This is different than other common coronaviruses, which cause a common cold. Um, other common cold viruses, such as rhinovirus and metanumavirus, where w there tends to be a seasonality to those. Mm -hmm. We aren't positive that there will be a seasonality to this. Mm. It may continue through as the other viruses die down, such as influenza and other common cold viruses. So it would be great if it did. We would definitely like to stop the spread in any, by any means possible. Um, but at this point in time, we aren't confident that it for sure will die down. Hmm. What, what, uh, what is the latest that we're hearing on the vaccine? Or I know, I know it's a very long period of time mm -hmm. to get that in place, but what, what is there any news on the that? The latest I heard was at least a year, maybe yeah. two. Okay. Um, so there is no vaccine. So again, that is different than influenza as right. well. Right. It's similar to other common cold viruses where there's no vaccine. Mm -hmm. For influenza, we also have treatments available. There is no treatment for this. Um, certainly trials are ongoing. Yeah. And we're working towards that for both vaccination and therapies. But at this point in time, uh, it could still be months to years down the road. Mm -hmm. Doctor, any final words of wisdom yeah. that you could share with our mm -hmm. senior living communities? Yeah, I think it's important to um, acknowledge that currently there is a low level of community spread um, around this region, around mm -hmm. the Midwest. In other areas, we've seen the news reports, there is community spread. It's important to know where you're living and keep updated of the most uh, relevant news on the spread. This mm -hmm. is by going to the CDC website, but also your local or state health departments. They are probably gonna provide you with the most up-to-date, accurate information. Um, this disease entity is quite distinct from flu and other cough and cold viruses. At this point in time, there's no therapies or vaccines as we talked about. This may or may not decrease as far as infections go in the summertime or in the warmer months. We don't expect it to, but that would be certainly nice if it did. Um, the best thing you can do to protect yourself is adequate hand hygiene, washing with soap and water frequently or using alcohol gels, trying to avoid putting your hands in your eyes, nose, or your mouth. If you have loved ones that are ill or, patient, or people who come to visit you if you're ill, please ask them to avoid from coming to visit you. And uh, just keep uh, abreast of, of your own health and your own symptoms. Um, at this point in time, there, are st there is still a high amount of influenza going around. Mm. And so it is very um, high activity level at this point in, in the U.S. in general. But as we move through, we expect influenza activity will go down as stated. Um, so we just have to kind of watch and see what happens. And the news changes from day to day yeah. and week to week. Yeah. Crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. Dr. Hawkinson, thank you yeah, so, thank so you. much. We yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Right. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to uh, like, subscribe on any of the podcast platforms, and uh, thank you for listening. And thank you to the University of Kansas Health System. Yes, absolutely.